you want to become a cloud solutions architect. But you have no idea what technology you should study and what is the roadmap. In this video, we are going to go over solutions architect roadmap. Hello guys and girls, my name is Raj. Currently, I'm a senior specialist solutions architect for containers and serverless at AWS. Before I was a specialist solutions architect, I was a general solutions architect at AWS. I'm in AWS for over the last three and a half years. And before that, I was a distinguished cloud architect at Verizon. I have over 19 years of IT experience. And out of that, last nine years, I was a solutions architect. So whatever I'm going to share today is based on my actual experience from what I have observed from working on different projects. I am not someone who is just a pen and paper instructor. I closely follow all the technology trends and try to stay on top of it. So whatever I share will be from my actual experience. Beyond that, I'm also a best-selling Udemy and Pluralsight author, public speaker, and guest lecturer. Just a quick note, all my best-selling and highest rated courses on Udemy on system design, Kubernetes, DevOps with Jenkins, Git and GitHub, serverless, CloudFormation CDK are on sale right now. So you can get maximum discount, but only for next four days. Check out the free preview videos and the reviews and enroll if interested. All my courses comes with 30-day money-back guarantee. Discounted links are given in description. All right, back to the video. I have divided the skills into three distinct areas. Must-have skills, highly recommended skills, and skills with low return. First and foremost, you need to have a general idea on the compute, network, and storage services on that cloud. I have given the logo of AWS because I'm a little biased, but the same is true whether you are going for AWS or Azure or GCP. I have specifically put the word breadth here because it is impossible to learn all different compute network storage services in great depth. But as a solutions architect, you need to have some basic idea. For example, if the current on-prem project running some object-based storage, you need to know the equivalent cloud service. For example, AWS S3. If your project is running in on-prem Oracle, you need to know that there is a service equivalent of that in AWS, such as RDS Oracle, or if you want to modernize it, the project can be converted into Amazon Aurora. But obviously, you cannot know S3, all the databases, all the compute in detail. But you do have to learn certain services in depth. This will be depending on your project. As an example, when I was a general solutions architect at AWS, one of my customers was migrating their project onto Kubernetes, specifically Elastic Kubernetes Service on AWS. So I had to dive deep and learn a lot more than a general SA would know on Kubernetes. Similarly, for your project, let's say your project is migrating their on-prem database to a cloud-native database, or moving from their streaming solution to AWS streaming solution, you need to dive deep and learn those. For those of you who are not a solutions architect yet and looking to get a job for solutions architect or you are a fresher, I highly recommend learning Kubernetes. Compute options are always the more popular one. So beyond Kubernetes, you should also have some general understanding on EC2 and Lambda. And again, if your project is going for serverless, then obviously you need to know more about Lambda and less on Kubernetes. But being said that Kubernetes is super hot right now. According to a recent survey, if your resume says you know Kubernetes, you can get higher salary than those who do not know Kubernetes. Next thing that you must know is different system designs. Let's dive deep into the system design because this is the bread and butter of solutions architects. You will face different system design questions both on your interviews as well as in your real world projects. Let's talk about general solutions architect first. For general SA, you will be dealing with a broad range of services. So let's take an example. Let's say your customer or your project says, hey, I'm interested in Kubernetes. What would a microservice look like in Kubernetes? So you should be able to give a sample micros microservices architecture on Kubernetes. So you will be using a load balancer service, and then you will show some pod running on node, Similarly, 
if your project want to go to serverless, you should be able to give a sample API design with Lambda API Gateway, and you should be able to explain the flow. And for database example, because database is one of the critical things that people always have challenges moving from on-prem to cloud. Let's say the criteria is you should run an active active database and the project says, hey, I want to do a bi-directional replication in two different regions. So you should be able to present on bi-directional replicated database and give some options that's available in the specific cloud. Now, if we look at a specialist SA, Specialist SA deals with a limited number of services, but at maximum depth. What do I mean by maximum depth? So the expectation is, if something is available in the public documentation or the public reference of the service, the specialist SA should be able to either know or find it. They're the last point of defense before we go to the service team who actually created the services on the cloud. And the service teams are basically the software developers who are actually coding the services on the cloud. Their time is very, very valuable. So we want to bother them as much less as possible. So for that Kubernetes example, so the general SA gave the design and some general direction on scaling. With the same example, the customer might ask, okay, I want to scale, but cluster autoscaler is a little slow. How do I optimize it? So a specialist SA should be able to explain how to optimize scaling on Kubernetes using newly released Carpenter, or even for the older cluster autoscaler, what are some of the parameters that can be tuned to make the scaling faster. Similarly, a specialist SA would know how to use a single network load balancer with multiple EKS cluster rather than using a separate load balancer for separate clusters. One thing I want to point out is, uh, this general SA and specialist SA is the terms used for jobs at AWS. But if you are working in a company, which uh, most cases you folks are, and your company is working on an AWS project and you are the solutions architect, even though you are called as a solutions architect, depending on the project, you will specialize on certain technology. Uh, for example, when I was in Verizon at the end, I was in charge of migrating a project into serverless using Lambda, API Gateway, etc. So I had to dive deep and study. So even though my title was Cloud Solutions Architect, I had to go do some proof of concept. I had to understand how Lambda is optimized, how you can save money, how you can deploy security, etc. And I assume most of you guys and girls in that boat uh, so have a general understanding, but depending on the project, you are expected to dive deep in that technology. And one of the questions, so I put this as the database, uh, because like I said, database is very common challenge. Projects will ask, how do other customers use this service? Okay, Mr. Architect, you are saying I should move from Oracle to Amazon Aurora. Does it scale? Is it secure? Are there any other big projects like my project who have done it and what do they say? Since the specialist SA is dealing with multiple customers on database, for example, for a database specialist SA, he or she would be able to cover these questions. Going back to the solutions architect skill tree, the next thing you need to know is presentation skills. This one is very underrated because we always study hard on the system design and technical parts but we ignore presenting them. Remember that at the end of the day, solutions architect is an individual contributor role. No one will be reporting to you. So when a manager asks his or her team to do something, they do it because they report to the manager. And at the end of the year, their salary increase will be depending on the manager. As a solutions architect, you need to influence a large group of people without anyone reporting to you and every design will have some disadvantages. You need to know how to handle the objections on those at the same time, move the needle or move the project forward. If you are not good at articulating why you picked this particular system design, there will be a lot of analysis paralysis and the project will stall. So as you study these steps, first you study all the AWS services on this compute network storage, and then let's say, for example, you learn Kubernetes and then you learn different system design. It is very important that you pick few of those designs, you create the slides. So I know it's very easy to watch a YouTube video on a design, 
But as soon as you try to put the design yourself, even the same design, you will see you will face some struggle. So I would say in the beginning, just pick three designs, maybe three tier architecture, a serverless API, and let's say Kubernetes microservices. Try to put them in PowerPoint and then try to present it. You can either do it in front of the mirror or you can just do it by yourself and you will see you will stumble a lot. So keep practicing till they are smooth and then go to more advanced designs. All right, so those are the must-have skills for Solutions Architect and you can study in this order that I am showing. So next topic which is highly recommended is DevOps components. So these days I'm seeing that the DevOps architect and solutions architect jobs are kind of getting merged in a lot of companies. And under DevOps component, you should know at least one infrastructure as code, either CloudFormation or Terraform. And then you need to know how to create pipeline using one of CI CD tool. So I put the icon of Jenkins here because Jenkins is the most popular one. But if your project is using GitLab, CircleCI, etc., you need to learn that. All right, now that you have learned all the must-have skills and the infrastructure as code and the DevOps components, now it's time to put those in practice and learn how to create small, small demos and proof of concepts. So I'll give an example. Let's say you presented the serverless design to the customer. The customer will say, this sounds great, but can you just show us a small demo or something else it's very difficult to understand? So then you go back and uh, code a little bit of the Lambda and then hook it up to API Gateway. You go back to the project lead and then you show the demo. You need to know at least one programming language and then some of the other components. So I have given Python here because Python opens up a lot of opportunities because Python is used not only for small demos and proof of concepts for cloud, as well as machine learning, uh, scripting, uh, system administration, security, etc. But if you know Node.js, Rust, Go, any modern language, that's fine as well. You also need to know how to do Git and GitHub. As part of doing the demo and proof of concept, you need to grab some already existing code from a GitHub repository, create a branch, modify it, create a pull request, etc. Now one thing, folks get hung up on is how deep they should learn this programming language. You don't need to learn data structure, algorithm, and complex concepts. All you need to learn is how to use cloud services in your code. One example is for the serverless API demo, all you need to do is get some fields from the incoming payload and insert into DynamoDB or select some fields from DynamoDB and return back to the API. There is no fancy algorithm that you need to know and code. And also, you will never face a coding round in your solutions architect interview. Next thing, which is highly recommended, is cloud certification. So if you have a certification like AWS Solutions Architect Professional, that really helps you stand out from the crowd and get that call from the recruiter. And the last thing I will say is stop chasing shiny stuff. Prioritize technology that gives you the highest amount of return. There are new cloud services coming out all the time. You need to understand the pros and cons and avoid just the gimmicky stuff. As a solutions architect, you are setting the trend for your project. Folks will come to you and say, hey, Mr. Architect, I have my project running like this currently. How would you modernize it? And then you have to select the technology and create the design. So you need to understand how a particular technology will scale, how can you secure it, how can you cost optimize it. In AWS, we like to say, pick the right tool for the right job. Hope this video was helpful. If it was, click that like button, smash it. If that's something you are into, click subscribe. Ask me any questions in the comment section. Each like, subscribe, comment help this channel grow and motivates me to do more videos. That's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.